G'day guys, I've uh, got a video here for old rigs down under for you. I wanted to show you a couple of things on this old F model before I uh, get the thing fired up. So, one of those things is the, uh, the air start valve. So, this truck was missing one, as, you, as I mentioned in the video previously. So anyway, this is one that I've found and I've just got a couple of new fittings for it. Um, I'll take them off for the time being. But anyway, I'll just quickly show you uh, what's inside them. Um, they're not too basic, uh, not too difficult, quite basic. So um, there's two different types. This is a seal coat type with a nut on it. Um, the Ingersoll Rand type will have a circlip in the end of it, so they'll have, they'll have a, um, a recessed cap with a circlip that holds the end of it on. Anyway, under this here, on both the spring. Uh, both the circlip style and the nut style, there's a spring under there, right? There's not a heap of pressure on it, but there's a little bit, so just something to be mindful of. Um, so I've, I've already loosened this off. Um, they're usually not too tight. There's an O-ring in on here. Sometimes it'll bind a little bit. Um, you know, just hold a bit of weight on there. And that's it, like there's not, there's not a heap there, so I, I can move the spring in, it's not like a brake booster spring or something like that that's going to come out and take your head off. Um, yeah, so if you look at that end cap there, you've got a sealing surface in there, like a rubber, thick section rubber washer, and the spring fits down through the guts of that. Then in here you've got your spool, now that should come out of there, Just wriggle him out. It's been sitting around a little, by, little while, it's had a bit of water in it, you can see some of the scale. There's still a little bit of fat on those O-rings there, so anyway, all I'm going to do today is just give it a little bit of a clean out. Um, sometimes what they'll do, <clears throat> if they're dry inside, the classic thing they'll do is just, um, when they're, when, so what happens with the valve, you've got air that comes in uh, that side there, and there's a piston at the back of it and when you either press the button or turn the key it sends an air trigger down to the top of that piston and then it comes out this hose or fitting here round to your hose, round to your starter and um, what will happen sometimes and you would have seen it on a video earlier on with an old F model but it's a lot smaller valve um, this piston will get stuck so it'll open and then it'll just jam there. So instead of shutting off and just getting a nice quick burst of air, it'll just continue, continue to um, stay open and drain all the air out. Um, you'll just hear the starter just continually winding over. So um, yeah, just want to give it a little bit of a clean up. Sometimes you'll you'll get a little bit of air leaking past the seat, and it'll leak out that hose, and you won't be able to hear it because it's such a you know a big diameter fitting. Uh, it's not like a cord line where you can put, put your ear to and, and hear it. So sometimes you'll get, you'll get air going through the hose and out the starter. Like I say, because it's such a, you know, you're talking inch fittings or inch and a quarter fittings, um, you just won't hear it and you'll drain your air start tank out. So this thing here, it's, um, it's not, just a, not just a repair job. It should be considered as maintenance. Um, it should be something that you do, you know, fairly regularly if you've got an air start system and... Um, especially with this old stuff like I've got, a lot of it sits around for a long period of time. So it's always good just to give them a little bit of a freshen up. A bit of rag, or I just use a bit of Scotch Bright if there's a bit of scale in there. You want to get that seat clean. So where that where that O-ring seals there, you want to get that pretty clean. Um, there's a couple of spots in them which are a bit prone to just um, a bit prone to building scale and stuff on them. So you just want to try and do away with that. That's the main thing. Um, and you know, for an old clunker like this thing that we're just putting together here, you know, you can have them so that they're just functioning. I mean, all it's got to do is just move forward and back, really, come off its seat, and then go back down it. So I mean, what I'll be doing when I start this thing, because it's a cab over and there's only one of me, I'll I'll build up the tank full of air, <clears throat> and what you've got there is that. Um, that fitting where the quarter hose goes into it, and I'll just get, like once the tank's full of air, um, so your air will be into there, air will go into that um, fitting there, pushes this plunger upwards into the spring, lets all of this air down around here, 
through the big hose and as soon as you let your uh, finger off the trigger that drops back down under spring pressure and um, seals it off. So yeah, we, we don't have to do anything all that all that wild and magnificent with it. Just got to get it clean. Um, get it clean, get it free. So pretty basic most of the time, like I say. They're an alloy body, um, so they won't rust as such. Um, but they just build that that scale, that white coloured scale. So you just want to get that off. That's the main thing. So there's normally a couple of different hose sizes. Like I say, with the early truck over there, that old 63F model, it uses a very small, um, <clears throat> very small valve. It's about that size in the guts of it. Um, so a lot, a lot smaller than this one. So, yeah, and you can't buy parts for those, but you can still buy parts for the Ingersoll Rand and the Sealco valves. Um, today, I, I won't be putting parts in it. I'll just be greasing up the O-rings that are on there. I'll just use a bit of rubber grease on them and they'll be right. Like I say, it's, it's not going out on the road at the moment. We're just trying to get the thing going and probably having a bit of fun as much as anything. So further down is obviously always a bit more of a challenge to get into. So just find something to, just an old six cylinder head stud here, that'll do. You just want to try and get in there and give it a little bit of a clean, that's all. Give it a hit with some brake clean and some rag when you're done. Um, you've got to think like these things aren't moving up and down at a great rate of knots or anything like that. They've only got that... <coughs> you know, when you think about that body there, you know, they're really only moving that far at a time. So, not even an inch of travel, so if you keep that in mind, you just get the appropriate surfaces clean, it should be pretty right. Right yeah, that's looking a bit better than what it was. There's no lumpy spots in it. There's a bit of discoloration where there's been some water, but that's not the end of the world. Um, main thing is I've got that got that initial seat where the step is in the housing. I got it nice and clean, that's good. It's always always good when you can do that. Rightio, I don't know if you can see that, there is some markings in there, but it's all really smooth. That's the main thing, that's what you want when you've got an O-ring seal on anything. Rightio, I'll sit that back in the vise for the time being, the old Miami vise. So normally, you just um, pick your O-rings off, and just keep them, there'll be a couple there that are a pretty similar size. You just don't want to mix them up in case you case here, they are in ever so slightly different size, I don't know, I can't remember if it's this one or the Sealco one used, two very similar O-rings, um, but they're not the same. But yeah, like I say, we're not, we're not, um, not re rebuilding anything for ice road truckers or anything here at the moment, so it's, um, it's all pretty basic stuff. The O-rings actually feel alright, you know, there's not, um, they haven't got flat spots on them, so they'll seal up alright. Just give them a bit of a wipe over. That one there, because it's a square section seal, I'm not going to touch it, just in case it's a a little bit um, a little bit fragile and doesn't want to go back into shape. So I'll just clean around it. It's just got a little bit of scale sitting on the section of the spool above it. Give him a little bit of a clean up, it'll be right. It's actually still a bit soft, so it probably should be alright. A lot of them you pull apart in something that hasn't been apart for years and they'll be rock hard. They'll have a flat spot on them and 
No, they'll never seal in a million years. So this thing, you're just going to make it so it's nice and free, <clears throat> so that the minute you, or the second you take that, um, take the air pressure away from that piston, which is under there, um, this spring here can overcome it and push it back down and seal, seal its seat. So that that's really what you're looking for. Uh, obviously, when when it once it's back in that home position, so to speak, that's where it's gonna it's where it's gonna seal when the truck is sitting still when it's not in use. But yeah, during during its actual use, yeah, like it's it's only got to be free. Um, like we saw with that old one in the video that I did a while ago, um, when they get a bit of wear in the body or they might get a slight bend in them over time or something like that, sometimes they do stick and um, there's not much you can really do. You used to be able to buy parts but for the old ones, but these ones here, I don't know if you can buy the original or the individual parts now, you, you're probably better off just buying a new valve now. But like I say, you still can buy an O-ring kit. That gets you out of trouble in most cases. So just a little bit of a little bit of rubber grease on all of these. Doesn't matter what sort you use. I always reckon the softer rubber greases are better. Um, you can use Vaso if you want to. But um, yeah, sometimes in the colder weather, the um, some of the rubber greases get a little bit solid, I reckon, and they just always worry about them just rolling an O-ring or something like that, or just getting a bit stuck. These ones here I reckon are pretty, pretty safe. Um, one I've used here a little bit is a PBR grease. It's pretty good. It's nice and runny. It's sort of, it's really good, really. Um, it's found a little bit of shit in the middle there. Um, yeah, so that's the main thing. Just um, See that's slid back in there nice and easy and it's moving up and down quite easily, so I'll even put a little bit more on that. Rightio, so now I'll just Give this top piece a quick clean. Had a pretty good run with the truck yesterday. I'm gonna gonna show you something else shortly. Just the um, I'm gonna take the top off the cool power air box and just show you what's inside of that. I just want to give it a clean out because one side of it was, well both sides of it were open actually so just want to make sure that there hasn't been a rat nest in there or something like that. Um, would have been a pretty good spot for them. Always pretty good at making a mess of everything. Touch wood, the last few that I've had here in different vehicles they, they haven't caused any damage as such, they've just made a mess, they're just dirty stinking bloody things and they piss and shit everywhere and make a mess but touch wood they haven't they haven't um, chewed too much hopefully it continues that way always got some baits out around here there's a lot of old trucks and stuff and <clears throat> lots of places from the hide you always always find one somewhere but generally speaking keep the numbers down a bit so the spring just goes back in there like I say just inside there no, I won't take it out for fear of damaging it, but you've got a rubber seal in there. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, just a rubber seal. It's just a thick section seal about so deep, you know, quarter of an inch or something like that. It just slides down there and um, it'll seal up against the, the end of that um, spool. So we'll put a little bit of a um, little bit of fat on that. A little bit on the inside here too because the inside of that section it'll go down on, on that um, end o-ring on the spool so you want that to be nice and free and don't forget too you've got to screw this thing in and sometimes when something's on a thread it gives you a bit of a false idea of if you know how tight something might be um, whereas with a 
with the O-ring type ones, uh, sorry, the circlip type ones, you've, you've actually got to press the, uh, push, the, physically push the uh, the end cap in to get the circlip on. So you always know with those ones, you know, if they're too tight or um, not playing the game or something like that. So. Um, <clears throat> nice snug it up there she's right <clears throat> and that's it you know so when you see it there's not much to it um, you now where you can see that there see the pool the spool inside of there like I say air comes in through that bottom fitting there and it fills up the the bottom of that um, spool and the surface area and the volume of it becomes greater than what's up here it pushes it forward, lets all the air out from in here to in here, out we go, makes a great heap of noise. Then when you take the charge away from here, the spring in the top pushes the spool back onto its seat and seals it off. So um, I don't know just exactly how we'll set this one up yet. I'll probably have to move the tank a little bit to, to fit it in place. I couldn't find any fittings that were the right size this morning's, you know, not decent ones, so I just got some while I was in town. Unfortunately couldn't get just the one piece ones at short notice, but they'll be right. So that's a Sealco um, air start valve. Right, next thing I was going to show you, um, is on this F model. I was just going to try and set this camera up in a position where the sun's not sort of beating in the face too much. And it might be easier said than done actually. Just bear with me here, it might shake and rattle and roll a bit. I just want to try and get it in a position that can be beneficial to you as well. step here a little bit, which is being about as handy as a fly screen door on a submarine at the moment. Oh yeah, we're somewhere near it there, so let's get the top of this sitting better. We might just hold that video there. I'm just getting a bit of a blinking from this camera to say that there's not a lot of memory left. So we might just stop it there and we'll come back for this video.